woodcraft, helping you make wood work. Having this little bit out here at the end a little bit smaller in diameter won't hurt a thing, okay? So I like to sneak up on this, and we're getting close. I don't want to go too far. That's just about right. Okay, so now I can go ahead and bring the rest of the tenon down. Square that shoulder off a bit. And there we go. That should give us a good fit. It is. The, the length of the tendon is fairly important, yes, because the way this goes together, and you can see we, we need to take it down just a hair more, but you can see you don't want the tenon too long or the ferrule won't be ever able to snug up against the scoop like so. Okay, so the, the tenon is actually, if you can see up inside there, I don't know if you, how well you can or not, but if you can see up inside there, the tenon actually comes to about like so. That's, that's what you want. Okay, so we're still just a tiniest bit too big. You certainly can, sure. Now one thing you want to be careful of is to not, um, you don't want to thread this on and keep turning. Once you're seated, stop because you could continue to turn that and actually strip those threads out. You don't want to do that. Trust me, you don't want to do that. <laughs> So, what, what uh, Clayton was asking just a moment ago regarding the size of this tenon. You saw that we were very, very close to, a f to it fitting into the ferrule, okay? His question was, wouldn't it be better at this point to use sandpaper to reduce this down? Well, you certainly could, okay? It wouldn't hurt anything, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just shave a little bit more off using my turning tool, uh, but if you're more comfortable using a piece of sandpaper, you could do that. But what I want you to keep in mind is that depending on the method you're using to turn this, you're not going to have a whole lot of room in here to work with a moving part. Okay, like right here, I, I would be hesitant to try to sand that down the way it is right now because you just can't safely get your hands around this thing with, you know, such a small amount of room. If you had a, a stick that stick was just them. exactly the length that you want, put it on there, then just hold it down. You know, you probably could do something like that. His, you know, he's, his, there, he's asking about using like a, a sanding stick so that you don't actually put your fingers in harm's way. Uh, and if you're going to do something like that, yes, that would, that would work. Yeah. I'm sorry, Art? Even a mill file. Yeah, or a mill file. Yeah, you could use a file. Yeah. I mean, you know, there's, there's so many different ways that you can go about doing stuff like this. Well, you, and, and that's a good point, too. Um, you want 
you want this as, as straight and smooth as you can get it. And then the point Clayton happens to be making is if you're not careful using a, a turning tool of some kind to make sure that you get a good straight edge across here, you know, you may have a piece that doesn't fit really, really well. The thing to keep in mind here though, Clayton, is that this doesn't, this doesn't get glued on, okay? It just kind of sits on there. So if it's not perfectly straight, if it's not a perfectly smooth surface, it's really not gonna make a whole lot of difference because the way this thing goes together, you know, you've got, you've got the little tongue on the bottom of the scoop there that the ferrule does fit onto very nicely like so. And so if, you're, if your tenon's not perfectly fitted to this inside, not a huge thing. Okay. Yeah. Kind of like who's made a European pen? Okay. You know the little tenon that you have to make? Okay. If your ring doesn't fit that tenon perfectly, you glue it on, right? It's kind of the same principle here. Okay. So again, I'm just going to shave a tiny little bit off of the end of this. And we'll see if that'll be enough. <clears throat> so now you can see why I did it the way I did, because now I know what I can do with this rest, the rest of the handle part here, okay? Well, you gotta love these easy wood tools, man. <laughs> it's so easy to just follow the line of what you're trying to turn. Talk out loud, Nick. I can't hear you. Well, you know, did everybody hear what Nick was asking? How far down do you, do you, when do you know when to stop? Or how do you know when to stop? When it's comfortable in the hand. You know, you can, you can do a couple of things. You can, you can measure it with a caliper, you can mic it out, okay? Lock your caliper in place and just check it against the end. Wow, look at that. It's like I'd done this before or something. <laughs> yeah, I know. Save the watch, it's way too late for the boots, right? Yeah, no, the, the, and that's, that's, a, that's a really good question. The, the thing to keep in mind is how, how pretty, how accurate, how, dare I say, anal do you want to be with this thing, okay? Certainly, you can turn this end so that it comes right down and just blends right into this metal and kind of makes a seamless little fit. And certainly that's what, you know, that's usually what I try to do. Um, do you have to do it that way? No. The advantage that you get to doing that though is that once this is all together and this is all screwed in up, you know, with the tenon up in there, if you don't have any, ex any exposed end grain here, it's much better off. You're much better off because then there's much less chance that any kind of moisture or anything is going to infiltrate into your handle. Okay, so you really do want to try to get down to where it just kind of blends right into the metal there. Okay. You you know I you know I suppose you could Bob Bob's question was just like with a European pen, could you actually put that ferrule on there and use it as a bushing? So for those of you that are pen turners, you're all familiar with the term bushings. And this is a good chance to test fit our ferrule. We still need to take just the tiniest bit more off of there, okay? But you can see how we're, we're getting a nice, 
a nice fit there, okay? And so what, what Bob is suggesting is could I just do this and continue to turn that and have that, that come onto the ferrule just like so. And I suppose that you probably could, depending on the method you're using to turn it, yeah. Now, another suggestion at this point would be try to limit the number of times you take this off and put it back on during the turning process, okay? Because every time you do that, you run the risk of damaging those threads, okay? Which would be another good reason to have a metal insert in there if that would indeed work, like we talked about at the beginning of the demonstration. You know, if that will indeed work. Um, it is tapped at this point, yes. Yeah. Did everybody hear that? Clayton's question was, is that already tapped uh, up inside the handle here? And yes, it is. Yeah. Sure. You know, Tom and I were... You and I? Yeah. Tom and I were talking about that uh, before the demo started. Could you soak those threads with some thin CA glue? And, you know, I so it, it wouldn't hurt anything, certainly. You know, it would, it, it might, yeah. Uh, so, could you do that? Sure. Yeah, just drizzle some thin CA all around the inside of that, that hole. Let it drip down in there. Now, of course, you got to remember, this is threaded probably this far down into the handle. So, you know, you're, you're going to have to be able to get that glue pretty deep down in there. Could you do that? Sure, yeah. Another thing that you could do is before you attach this, before you screw the, the scoop itself in, smear some thick CA or some epoxy onto the threads and screw it in. That's going to serve a couple of purposes. It's going to help to reinforce that. Plus, it's just going to lock it into place so that then it doesn't really matter. Then it wouldn't, but while you're doing this, taking it off and on. You know, I, I haven't tried that, uh, to be honest, so I couldn't say for sure if you would get a lot of benefit from that or not. But again, I don't think it would hurt anything. How would a wood hurt? Another good question, uh, a wood hardener. Uh, would a wood hardener give you um, better results than CA glue down inside those threads to help protect those threads? I don't know, maybe, maybe. Um, if, you, if, if, if you decide to make some of these,